Hi, this is Pastor Dallas Billington coming to you and uh, to all our family with City Church and all those that have watched last week and everything that's going on in our society uh, with the virus in our country and the world, everybody's concerned. And uh, we looked at last week about fear and we don't have that spirit of fear. And I was praying and thinking about what God has given us and what he says to us and who he is. He is the God of all comfort. And that's what I'm going to look to today. And I couldn't help but think about uh, in our world today that we have uh, even people travel that they're scared and we have, we have comfort dogs. And I just happen to have uh, one of those uh, with us today. Oakley, come here. What do I got? What do I got? Are you going to be my comfort dog? Come here. <laughs> All right, you good boy. Isn't it amazing what animals can do to calm us? And you know, if you think about it, they're God's creatures. God made animals. God made dogs. God made cats. God made these animals to comfort us. And I couldn't help but think, when you think about a comfort dog on an airline, what do we know when it comes to the power of God's word, how that he can comfort us? And I couldn't help but think of this passage when I think about God as a God of all comfort. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. You know, think about that for a minute. All comfort. Anything that you're experiencing right now that you're afraid of or that, that you just can't seem to calm down, I want you to know when you look to Jesus, the scripture starts out that we're blessed. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The blessing that we have is to know that we can go to him because he is the God of all comfort. Think about that for a minute. And he's, as he continues on in those words, he says, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are also comforted by God. Think about that. God is here with us in all areas. You know, everybody's a little bit different. You know, when I've talked to people and, and you've talked to people right now and, and every day is changing with this virus and are we gonna have to live in more of a isolated situation and everything comes up different every time we turn the news on. But I want you to know is God tells us in his word that as a believer, as we looked at last week, we don't have to fear. He's given us a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. And when we're comforted and we know that we have that peace, look at the testimony. Look how we can comfort others during this time. You know, the, the Bible continues and it says, which we are also comforted by God, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. You know, I can't quite figure this out, and I don't think any, any of us really can. I've listened to psychologists and everything and going on. And let me give you an example. It's almost like what we're hearing some of the craziest things that are going on now that uh, you go to buy a pizza and you say, well, how much will that be when you get it to go? And he says, uh, hey, that'll be three rolls of toilet paper. And uh, it's the craziest thing. What's, what's, what's going on? Is that, I, I still can't figure this out. What has happened in our society that when we go to the grocery store, that's the thing that's most vacant and all the food and the meats and everything is there. I don't know how that's comforting people, but I know that, that I want you to know today that through Jesus, through Jesus, he comforts us in all our tribulation. Some of you right now are wondering, how are you going to pay your bills? 
What are you going to do? And you can't seem to find that peace. And you're looking everywhere. I want you to know that God gives us a way to comfort us because he's the God of all comfort. How does he do that? You need some tools. And how does... Uh, we don't know what's going to happen next week. What am I going to say when the next broadcast? We don't know. But I know that he gives us this one tool. We're going to look at three today. And one is the promises of his word. He tells us if we meditate on his word day and night, our way will be successful. Let me give you another verse I'd love to read today. It's found in the Old Testament. In Psalm and chapter 119 and verses 50 through 52. This is my comfort in my affliction. For your word has given me life. Isn't that unbelievable? Your word has given me life. God's word gives us life. You know, when, when we're afraid and we feel like all our finances have collapsed and we don't know what's going to happen next with our job and, and how well we might be quarantined and we hear all these different things on the news and you hear this on CNN and then you hear this on Fox and it's back and forth and you're like, I don't want to listen to any of this anymore. You know, we don't, we don't know what's going on. I want you to know it's the promise of God's word, the promises that are in here that gives you life. In other words, you can have joy and peace and meditating on his word day and night. You know what? You're going to know what to do next because he says he will light your path. Let me continue. He says, the proud have me in a great desertion, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I remember your judgments of old and you have comforted me and have comforted myself. What does that mean? He comforted myself. That means when we know what all these promises are in here, Jesus never leaves us or forsakes us. We can come boldly towards him and through that throne of grace. I don't know what you're facing right now, but you might be all alone by yourself in this situation. I want you to know as that word says, that you can take over, not you, but the power of Christ through you can be comforted by what you do. See, we, we complicate everything. I was reading the other day on, there's 10 different things that we can do right now with the virus that's taken place to, to do this, to calm ourselves and to do that and do that. And you know what? There wasn't anything about God's word. I want you to know what God's word is telling us today, that his promises comfort us to where we have life. You say, well, let's take it down right to where we need it. What we need are the tools, and this is a tool. God's word is a tool in our life. And as we open up and read his promise, it's a reminder of who he is in our life. He sees everything. He knows everything. He knows what you're going to go have to go through tomorrow. He's right there with you to comfort you. All we have to do is pick this up and read it just for a few minutes every day. That's all you have to do. It's not all these other things that we're hearing about to calm us today in our society and to give us comfort. God is the God of all comfort. And it says right here that his word has given me life. I want you to know today, if you're willing to pick God's word up for a few minutes every day, Joshua chapter one tells us when we meditate on his word, day and night, your way will be successful. Doesn't matter if you've lost your job or what's happening with the virus or what we hear on the news next, or I don't, I don't know what you're facing, but I want you to know that you can have life, you can be comforted through his word. How it happens is the, the, the day that we accept Jesus as our savior, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. And as the Holy Spirit is, is in us, 
Jesus knows exactly what you need today. And if you're willing today, right now, or whenever you're watching this, is to take the time and to open his word up, he gives you life when you read it. And you know what? He's going to calm you. And you're going to read a promise. Again, as I said, he never leaves us or forsakes us. You know, I was talking to my son in California, and he was saying, Dad, uh, <clears throat> everything that's going on, it's, it's, it's so important in the Bible and how that people realize to go back to it again and again. And he gave me the example of the fires that they had in California and how that the helicopters and the firefighters constantly had to be dousing water on those fires again and again and again and again. That's how it's put out. That's how the fires are put out. You go back to God's word again and again and again, and Jesus reminds you, when we meditate on his word day and night, you will have success. It's the promise that we have in his word to know that we can win. We can have victory through what we're facing. So that's one of the ways that we're comforted. What else does, does Jesus do? What else does he give us in our comfort? Well, I want to share with you another verse that's found in the New Testament when it comes to having comfort from the Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew chapter 6, is a prayer. Disciples went to the Lord and said, Lord, uh, how do you want us to pray? We're not really sure. What? How do we go about this? And Jesus goes to them and he begins, this is the way that you pray. Let me read it to you today. He says in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 9 and 10, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father, in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Our Father who is in heaven. You know, one of the ways that we're comforted next to the promises of God's word is prayer. You can go to your heavenly Father, three in the morning, driving your car, when you hear something else in the news at this time, and he comforts you. Isn't it amazing we can't explain it? But when you go to Jesus in prayer, the Bible even goes this far in the book of Romans. The book of Romans tells us that even though you might not know how to pray or what to say, he hears your heart. He knows exactly what you're saying to him in your spirit. He is our heavenly father. And his word says we can come boldly to him and to his throne room and find mercy and grace in the time of need. What a time that we are in, that we need him more than ever. Prayer, prayer, praying to God, praying, Jesus, I, I, I need your help. And I want you to know that he's right there to listen to you. Our Father who is in heaven. We're so grateful if we had amazing dads when we were growing up. And I know many of you maybe maybe didn't. But I want you to know that there is a heavenly father who loves you more than you could ever imagine. And he wants to hear from you. And he's there to direct your step. I want you to know today that you can be comforted through prayer. And when you and I pray and he hears those prayers, don't miss this. Listen, listen to what he's about to tell you. We miss, so I say, Dallas, I, I, you know, I talk to the Lord and I pray, but uh, he never answers me. I want you to know if you take the time to calm and to, after you've prayed, just to take a minute, I guarantee you, you will hear from him. And through his word, he will show you and he will show you what the next step is. Don't underestimate what prayer can do right now in our country, in your life, and people that you're around and how you affect them. See, let me go back to that other verse again. When we're comforted, 
when we're comforted, we can also comfort others. I want you to know today, when you and I pray, and God gives us the strength, and, and through that prayer, he, we know that there's something that we can't quite figure out, but we bust through another realm, and that is we go into heaven. And when we know Jesus is hearing us, and he wants to hear us, and he wants to help us, there's a calming effect with that. He's a God of all comfort. And to know, you know what? Lord, I know you've got this. And I know that we pray for our country and our president and, and the, all the health workers and everything that's going on. Lord, we don't know what's next, but Lord, help us, direct us. And we know that there's a peace that God tells us to be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And you know what he says he'll do? He'll guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. There's a comfort in that. You don't have to be anxious, but it comes through prayer. Finally today, what's the last thing we have? His promises that comforts us. We have prayer that we can talk to him. He is our heavenly father. And going back to what Jesus says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's amazing the power that you have when you pray. And whatever that we're facing right now, this virus or loss of a job or what you're going through, I want you to know that through prayer, that God will open those doors. And you know what the book of Revelation says? When Jesus opens the door, no one can shut it. That's a promise that you have today. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I know that through prayer, that Jesus is my heavenly father. And I can find rest and hope and joy and peace when I go into his throne room. Let me close with this because I've heard this so much in the last week and a half, two weeks, that people are looking at our loved ones and, and other people that we're close with. Uh, we're spending more time with each other and how we're finding out how important it is and, and what it is to even as believers as we get together. You know, there's power when you get together as brothers and sisters in Christ. There's so much power that Jesus tells us in his word that in the book of Matthew, where two or three are gathered, I am in the midst of them. And whatever we pray and whatever our petition is, he's willing to hear and answer. Think about that. Two or three together. You know, it's amazing when when we've been experiencing this the last couple weeks, when you call somebody or you get together just by hearing their voice, there's a calming effect. You know, Jesus tells us that when we hear and we know from him, my sheep know my voice. When we gather together and, and there is a uniqueness in that, we know when there's a loved ones, there's, there's a special attachment there. And by hearing someone's voice, by hug, by coming together, and we've all experienced that in such a heightened level, it's so important that we don't miss that we're together with believers at this time. And, and it's so hard because we can't corporately fellowship. But Jesus gives us that promise. We can be calm. We can have comfort when we get together just two or three of us as believers. Isn't that amazing? God does powerful things when we just get just two or three of us. And when you hear a brother and sister in Christ call your name out in prayer and pray for the president and pray for our healthcare workers and, and pray for each other that God will heal this land, watch the change that it makes in your life. It is amazing what God will do when we look to him. We look to his promises, he will comfort us. When we go to him in prayer, it's unbelievable 
what he will do and the strength that we will gain. It says, a peace that passeth all understanding. And when we gather together as people and as believers, where two or three are gathered, in this time that we can't, can't gather really even is our government is asking more than 10 people at a time. But how powerful that is in God's word to say, to quote and to know where two or three are gathered, Jesus is in the midst. And there's powerful things that he'll do and answer when we petition him in prayer at this time. It's amazing what God will do when we just take the basics of his word and just follow them. So I'm just asking you today as I close, I'll be back again uh, next week. I'm going to try and, and bring a couple messages a week now that we can't get together corporately as a church. But I want you to know that Jesus knows exactly what's going on and he will calm your heart through the promises of his word, through the power of prayer and through gathering together with two or three believers It'll be amazing how that we will come out of this stronger than we ever thought we could ever be. Know that you have that hope today. And I want to close with this. As we are comforted today as believers, we need to comfort others. We've never had a time since 9-11, I believe, that people have been so scared. And so when people see that we're calm and we're comfort, say, how, how is that? And you know what is amazing? You can say, well, you know, I, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I don't know what I'd do right now if, if it wasn't for him. I mean, I've lost my job. I, I don't know what's going to happen next week, but I know as a believer, he's my Heavenly Father, and he's in control, and he's promised me all throughout his word again and again and again, he will direct my path. And hopefully through that, the comforting of someone else, you can lead them to Jesus Christ. Maybe right now you've turned this on and I just wanna, before I close in prayer, I just want to ask you, if you don't know Jesus as your savior, would you pray right now with me? Just pray, dear Jesus, I'm scared. I don't know what's happening, but I believe that you are God's son and you came into this world and you lived a perfect life. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I believe that you died on the cross for all of my sins. And Jesus, I ask you, come into my heart right now. Forgive me for all of my sins. I ask you that, Jesus. That's all you have to do. And, and pray this after you've prayed that. And help me from this day forward to live by your resurrection power. That's what we can do. That's what God will do for you. If you prayed that prayer, we want to hear from you at City Church. And it's unbelievable what we're living in. But I'm going to close in prayer. And after I close in prayer, you'll see, I'll come up on the screen how you can... Uh, connect with us and, and what all we can do for you or how we can help with you at this time and also how that you can give and help us continue this ministry at City Church. It's such, as the Bible says, for such a time as this. Let's pray. Father, I come to you at this time. I don't know when someone's watching this, Lord. It could be middle of the afternoon or they're driving their car, Lord, or whatever it might be, but we pray for our country. We pray for our president. Jesus, we pray for brothers and sisters in Christ. We know you're the God of all comfort. Lord, I ask right now that all the health care workers, you would keep them well, keep them safe. Father, keep this to a minimum in our country. And Lord, would you just knock this virus out? Lord, may we continue to listen to our, our officials, the government leaders on how to go about on what we're supposed to do. And Lord, as we look to your word, you calm us. You're the God of all comfort. Through the promises of your word, through prayers, we can talk to you any time of the day or night. And Jesus, through getting together with other believers and praying to you, 
Lord, we can come through this stronger than ever. So again, as I close, I ask again, Jesus, just believe with all the doctors and nurses, our president, all those in Congress. Lord, we ask you, all our leaders in the country, give them wisdom to guide us through this. And most of all, we're thankful that Jesus, you are the God of all comfort and you will guide us through this. And you will give us, as your word says, you give us life. Thank you, Jesus, in your name, amen. Thanks for being with us today. And I just wanna close, we always do with our church. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Thanks for being with us.